Hi folks, we're back and we're doing a deals alder reaction. Today our two pieces that we have to have, our two reactants, are the diene and the dienophile. It is best to have electron withdrawing groups as your X. We'll talk about why, but it basically stabilizes the not only the pattern we're going to use, but also what happens when we have bridges. The yields alder reactions only work with S dienes. So if you have an S trans, you're out of luck. All right, what's going to happen here? Let's get rid of this uh, lovely plus sign for a moment here and get back to where we actually can move some electrons. All right, so the pattern. You're going to take this pi bond and you're going to form a sigma bond between the diene and the dienophile. When you do that, it forms five bonds around that carbon. That doesn't work. So we're going to move that double bond over. It forms five bonds around another carbon. That doesn't work, so that double bond has to move. And we get another sigma bond formed. And indeed, what we're going to form here, folks, is we are going to form A double bond uh, where w there wasn't one, and you have your group. Okay, whatever the configuration of the X to begin with is probably what's going to happen in the end. So, for instance, if I had trans X's to begin with, then I would have trans X's in the end. Makes sense, hopefully. Um, that is an important piece to recognize, but what's really much more interesting is when we don't have the simplest diene I can use, which is what I just used here, but we have a more complex diene, and that is one that already has a ring. Let's say I had this, and let's make our dienophile a little more interesting as well. Let's do that and really put some good withdrawing groups on here. They stabilize those electrons a whole lot. All right, so let's move some electrons here. Same pattern exists here. First thing that happened is the dienophile makes a bond between it and the diene. And again, you've formed too many carbon bonds. You have five carbon bonds there, so you have to move that pi bond. You also have to move out that lovely pi bond, because it now has five carbons around it. And a lot of people want to draw this in a couple of different ways. A lot of people want to maintain the six-membered ring to begin with, right? And then they somehow want to do something. I don't even get how you would draw this, but let's see if I can draw something like it. There's my... oh, that's horrible. Really. So let's maybe put it in the back here. What's going on? Alright, and then you have your lovely... on top of it with your double bonds, right? And as if that wasn't complex enough, it has to have kind of that look about it. Now, what are you doing here? That is a jumbled mess, isn't it? That is truly a jumbled mess. And actually, I think more people don't draw it this way. They draw it more as something like this. They try to say, oh well, that didn't work. So let's draw this and have my lovely Diana file right there and my double bond, but then I need this bridge thing they draw it like that. That is also a mess. 
both of these a mess yuck so what we need is we need a better way of drawing this all right so what i propose is what most organic chemistry professors would propose which is a better way of drawing this what you're essentially going to do is you are going to draw something like a book that looks like it's been flipped down draw your bridge right here and decide whether your particular you got your double bond right there decide whether your particular dienophile needs to be endo or exo now this isn't perfect this is a really crappy way of doing this but you get a sense okay so endo endo or exo exo is going to have the same look about it it's going to have the same deal let's make that bridge really clear and point it up but this time you're also going to point up the um, the denophile, the rest of the denophile. Now the question is, which one do you think is better? The one with the rest of the denophile pointed down? Let's call that. So this one would be pointed down. Oh, boy, I really liked that a lot. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to move that quite as much as I did. I just show that it was pointing down. You're going down. All right. So let's make this a little bit better. Um, let's clean this up a little bit. Ooh, that was endo. Slightly different color purple, but you got my point. And let's get so that we can actually see it. There it is. So do you want the version with the rest of the denophile pointed down? or the rest the version with the rest of the Dina file pointed up. What you want to do here, endo means sin to the largest bridge. This one is particularly interesting because my two bridges, I have a bridge right here and I have a bridge right here. And both of those have two carbons in them. This one has two carbons. This one too has two carbons. But this one has two carbons in the pi bond. And what you want is you want to stabilize the pi bond with these groups, these electron withdrawing groups. So here, this endo is gonna be the prevalent one. In this case, you exo usually means anti to the largest bridge. And here, what are you stabilizing? You're stabilizing alkane alkane groups when you could be stabilizing something like a pi group. Also, this has some steric strain, as you'll notice. That's a bit of a problem. Okay, less steric strain on when they're a little bit further apart. So, in this case, and in most cases with Diels alders, endo is favored sometimes so predominantly that it will be the only thing that forms. But we want this electron stabilization. Stabilization between the pi bond, the double bond, and the electron withdrawing groups, whatever those are. Okay, so just when you're thinking about Diels alder think endo. Okay, that wraps it up for right now. I wish you a great day. See you soon.